Hello everybody. Hope everyone is having a good week so far. Before I get into the elders' letters, I want to thank Joe and Fran very much. Um, they have a show on six screens called Outside the Outside Story. And um, they were traveling through New Mexico and we just had lunch with them. So thank you, Joe and Fran, very much for taking the time to have lunch with us. And it was a lot of fun. A lot of laughs and talking and good. And she gave me a card and with everybody who had said hello and sending their love and hugs to us. So thank you very much, all of you, for your love and um, kind words and we appreciate it very much and we want to send love and hugs back to all of you so that was very nice and very thank you Fran for writing that all out and um, hope you have a safe journey now elders letters my goodness yeah now I read an email, oh, probably a day or two ago from someone who had asked me if I thought the Jehovah's Witnesses were getting paranoid. The answer was yes, because I had just talked to someone where her hus JW husband was really paranoid and starting to scare her he was so paranoid. Um, but they, these elders' letters will show you how paranoid they are. So, April 2023, Announcements and Reminders for Elders, Protecting Donors from Fraud. Now, this tells me they've probably had a problem if they're bringing this up. If a publisher informs you that he has received a suspicious email, text message, or phone call regarding a donation matter from someone who claims to be from the branch office, Please instruct the publisher to submit a report using the contact us feature on donate.jw.org. He should use a message section of the outline form to provide a brief description of what occurred. The branch office will then be able to contact the publisher directly by phone or email to obtain more details if needed. So that tells me they might be having some problems with their donation and people trying to scam them. Uh, congregation's territory map on JW Hub. Uh, the map of JW Hub showing your congregation's territory assignment has been relocated to the territory section of the congregation information feature. Updated version of JW Stream. On May 1st, 2023, JW Stream will be updated with a new design, making it easier to play, download, and share recordings of theocratic events. Thought you weren't supposed to be sharing those. The updated site will have online help files on how to play, download and share recordings, access to programs on JW Stream by elders and ministerial servants, and access to programs um, on JW Stream by email invitation should no longer be used. In due course, the Shepherd Book will be updated to reflect these changes. Security at Kingdom Halls and Congregation Meetings. Now remember, just had that incident in Germany. Though difficult situations cannot be entirely avoided, practical steps can and should be taken to ensure the security of our brothers when they gather to worship Jehovah. To assist in these efforts, a new document entitled Kingdom Hall Security Plan Form S-288 will soon be made available in the form section of the Documents tab on JW Hub. As soon as possible, the body of elders should modify the Kingdom Hall Security Plan as necessary keeping in mind that certain sections should not be modified. If the Kingdom Hall is used by more than one congregation, the Kingdom Hall Operating Committee should modify the Kingdom Hall Security Plan for approval and implementation by the respective bodies of elders. The written Kingdom Hall Agreement should indicate that the bodies of elders of the congregation sharing the Kingdom Hall agree to abide by the direction contained in the Kingdom Hall Security Plan. Body of Elders may wish to review some of the security arrangements with the congregation during a local needs part. The Body of Elders should decide who qualify to receive a Kingdom Hall key. When determining who qualify to serve as attendants, the Body of Elders should consider the age, health, and ability of the brothers. 
In due course, the Shepherd Book will be updated to refer to the Kingdom Hall Security Plan. Once the Kingdom Hall Security Plan has been modified, but before the arrangements are implemented, a security training meeting should be held with all elders and others who serve as attendants. This meeting should be held and the arrangement should be implemented no later than June 1, 2023. More duties for you elders. The series of outlines can assign the mnemonic, mnemonic form S289 has been prepared for use during the meeting. The outlines will soon be available in the form section of the documents tab on JW Hub. And I do have that um, form S289 already. And thank you Atlantis very much for sending me all of these. New official journal journal only for Germany a new issue of the official journal Jehovah's Witnesses in Germany volume 2023 number two has been published see jehovahzuzen.de column rech I think that's right anyway for coordinators of the bodies of elders announcements for congregations please ensure that the announcement for congregation is read at the next midweek meeting and thereafter posted on the information board for at least one month then they talk about the protecting donors from fraud the updated version pretty much all that we've already covered uh, for secretaries donations to support the kingdom work in india regulations in india restrict foreign funding for the kingdom work in that land however indian citizens who have a valid passport and are living abroad and those who are overseas citizenship of india card holders can make donations directly to the india branch office and then it just goes on to have some directions on that. And then for congregation, um, same thing about protecting yourself from fraud, warning everybody about that. Now here is this form S288, Kingdom Hall Security Plan. It's four pages long. Um, security general security measures the kingdom hall entrance doors will be unlocked 30 minutes prior to the start of a congregation meeting at the earliest the first brother to unlock the kingdom hall doors will be responsible for monitoring the entrance until the entrance attendant arrives when the kingdom hall is used by a small group such as for a meeting for field service a bible study or an elders meeting or during cleaning the doors will remain locked at all times all those who are assigned keys will be informed of these instructions. The body of elders determines who qualifies to have a Kingdom Hall key. Those who no longer qualify to have a key will be asked to return it to the secretary immediately. If an individual refuses to return the key, steps will be taken to make sure that the Kingdom Hall is properly secured. Every six months, the secretary will review the list of those who are assigned keys to ensure that all on the list still qualify. Tell me they're not getting paranoid. Brothers, brackets name, and brackets name will contact the local police department once a year to maintain good relations, expressing appreciation for their assistance if called upon. Now think about that for, the min for a minute. They won't report any alleged um, CSA, and they won't go out of their way to protect children. We already have proof of that, the Pencava Scott case. But yet they want to maintain a good working relationship with the local authorities when they need help. See, they care about the brick and mortar buildings, but when it comes to protecting children, no, no. So I find this very hypocritical that, you know, maintain a good relations with the local authorities, local police department. Yeah. Attendant roles. For each congregation meeting, at least one entrance attendant and one auditorium attendant will be assigned. However, all who are trained as attendants should be alert and willing to respond to an incident. Um, now, I'm going to put all of these in a um, kind of like a file share type deal, and I will have the link below so that you can grab these. Now, the link will only be good for six and a half days, so get it while you can. Um, they have, as you can see, there's a lot of red here of what the attendant duties are. 
monitoring the entrance before, during, and after the meeting. And at, at all times he will remain alert to those wishing to enter, kindly assert, ascertaining their intentions if they are unknown. If an individual does not appear to pose a threat, the entrance attendant may grant him access. If it is determined that an individual requires special attention, the entrance attendant will follow the instructions under the headings handling disruptions and handling serious security concerns. Locking the doors five minutes after the meeting starts. Inspecting the parking lot 30 minutes after the start of the meeting and 15 minutes before the conclusion. And they go through all of this and they're not going to be unlocking the doors until after the concluding prayer. So you're stuck inside. If you're there's a fire, good luck. Um, handling disruptions, you know, disruptive individuals, fire alarms, medical emergencies, handling serious security concern, violent individuals. Attendants will respond immediately to individuals who are intent on doing harm to others or who physically attack others. The auditorium attendant will take the lead in providing direction. In this situation, the attendants will do the following. Call the police as quickly as possible. Oh yeah, they'll call the police quickly for that. There is no need to warn the individual. The sooner the police arrive, the less harm a violent person can do. The auditorium attendant will call the police or confirm that they have been called. Try to prevent the individual from entering the building. So what they're doing is this attendant, part of your duty is you are putting yourself in the line of fire. You are becoming the human shield against the congregation. You see, brothers and sisters, we need the Gideons to help us in our support of the governing body. Gideon was such a beautiful example. Once he understood Jehovah's direction, he was willing to run into the fire for Jehovah and for his organization. That's what we need. We need Gideons. That's a weighty responsibility, if you ask me. How many family men are going to be willing to do that? Those serving as attendants are not permitted to carry weapons in preparation for an active shooter. Direct attendees to an escape route away from the violence. All will be encouraged to help others escape and leave belongings behind. Wounded individuals will not be moved unless there is an imminent risk to life. Exit in the direction that police are entering or as directed by them since this is usually the safest route. If evacuation is not possible, encourage attendees to hide. If possible, the hiding place should be in a locked room or in some other place out of the violent individual's view. Block the door with large items if it is possible to do so quietly. Provide protection if shots are fired. Provide protection how? You're in an open auditorium! <laughs> See? Bomb threats. If a bomb threat is received during the meeting, the auditorium attendant will go on stage and ask all to evacuate the building quickly in an orderly manner, taking their belongings with them, or he or someone he designates will contact the police. He and the entrance attendant will then follow the instructions under the heading evacuation plan. Then they have civil disturbances, severe weather, environmental emergencies, evacuation plan, training. See, they're going to have to be taking, the, getting these trainings all the time. Yeah. Each time a security incident occurs at the Kingdom Hall, the coordinator of the body of elders will arrange for a review of how the situation was handled. The risk incident report, form T05, will be used to record details and to review if any additional measures can be put in place to prevent future incidences. Current directions should be followed and when to submit the risk incident, incident report to the branch office. Additional subject. Describe arrangements decided on by the body of elders or collective body of elders such as measures involving a residence on the Kingdom Hall property. Yeah, that's another thing. Residences. All right. Now, Atlanta sent this. And I was reading through this and I was like, okay, what does this have to do with Watchtower? And then you get to the end. Um, Wikipedia, the NHS Test and Trace. Trace. NHS Test and Trace is a government funded service in England established in 2020 to track and help prevent the spread of COVID 19. 
Despite its name, the program was never, in fact, run by the NHS. The program is part of the UK Health Security Agency. The service and the agency are headed by Jenny, Jenny Harries. The service is the responsibility of the Secretary of State for Health and Social Care and the Minister of State for Social Care. In other words, the government. The initial budget for the service was 15 billion pounds, rising to 22 billion pounds in November of 2020. And a further 15 billion pounds was allocated for 2021 to 2022 to bring the total for the two years to 37 billion pounds. Yeah. And then it goes on to talk about, you know, how this was created. And press release here, April 25th, 2022, the New York City Test and Trace Corps partners with over 200 houses of worship wait for it, to expand at-home test distribution during religious holidays. Over 250,000 at-home tests have been distributed to houses of worship, representing diverse faiths in all five boroughs. Okay? Now, we already know about the food boxes. And you're probably wondering, what the heck has this got to do with Watchtower? Um, here on page 3 of the PDF... New York Test and Trace Corps announced today that its at-home test distribution program, which is distributing 6.3 million at-home tests this month, has partnered with 226 houses of worship and faith-based groups. Okay, then they go, he's highlighted all of these houses of worship and faith-based groups. Same thing. Okay. Then you get down here to page 5, consent and contact details for attendees at the Kingdom Hall. Yeah, you knew this. there was a connection between the government and Watchtower. In order to support the NHS test and trace program, we are taking contact details, name and telephone number of all visitors, as well as recording the times people have entered and left the Kingdom Hall, in line with guidance issued by the Department for Health and Social Care. Okay, we will only share your details with NHS test and trace. Okay, there's that form. And then there's this here from the uh, World Health Organization, Practical Considerations and Recommendations for Religious Leaders and Faith-Based Communities in the Context of COVID-19. By sharing, I'm reading just his highlights because this is a, there's a lot in this document. By sharing clear evidence-based steps to prevent COVID, religious-inspired institutions can prom promote helpful information, prevent and reduce fear and stigma, <laughs> too late, provide reassurance to people in their communities, and promote health-saving practices. Well, you really didn't think Watchtower was doing all this out of the goodness of their heart and caring about their members, did you? No. Makes me wonder, how much are they getting paid by the government for all of this? Oh, and like I said, you can read through all of this, and he's highlighted all the pertinent parts. Um, this one here, page 9 of the PDF. They can ensure that community contact lists are up-to-date and accessible to their members. Organizations can create calling trees in which individual members volunteer to phone several other members regularly to check on their well-being. Who knew all of this was going on behind the scenes, right? Here on page 5, actually it's page 10 of the PDF, but page 5 down here at the bottom of this page. Faith leaders are encouraged to use faith channels such as organizational web pages, newsletters, emails, phone tree, and faith publications, radio, or other broadcast media. Social media technologies offer religious leaders faith-based organizations and communities of faith, new ways to share life-saving messages. COVID-19 messages can also be woven into sermons. <laughs> you just can't make this stuff up. You, you really can't. You really can't. Now, going over here to Form S-289, the Attendant Responsibilities. Protecting God's people. Um, and the thing is, is now you're warning Jehovah's Witnesses? 
why haven't you been warning them about all of these violent incidences at Kingdom Halls all along? But anyway, this just goes through the whole thing. A lot of this we've already covered, um, how to handle disruptive individuals, um, violent incidents, handling serious security concerns, and uh, how to handle it all. And um, this is, it actually looks like it's in the talk format. And it says to be covered in approximately 30 minutes. So this is actually the talk they're going to be giving at the security meeting for the attendance. So thank you very much, Atlantis. We appreciate it. And um, something else that somebody told me this morning is that when they went on to JW Library, this screen popped up. So thank you very much, sweetie. I appreciate you sending this. But appears that JW Library crashed with Windows um, devices. So I think they've got some issues with their website, especially if they have people who are trying to get donations who aren't really from the organization. So, yeah. Yeah. So be careful out there. And thank you, everybody, so much for your comments and emails and phone calls. And love to all of you that sent love with Fran and Joe. And um, we love you all. You have a great week. Bye.